Welcome. In this video, I will discuss arrays of structs in C++. So, what are arrays of structs and why do we use them? Well, arrays of structs are arrays that have a struct as their data type. And we use these arrays of structs when we need to have more than one instance of a struct. It is much simpler for us to use these arrays of structs than it is to make a bunch of variables to hold a bunch of instances of structs. And it is not very scalable to use a bunch of variables, but it is to use an array because later on this array size will be able to change. But for now, we have static arrays and this is how we are going to define them. We are gonna have some struct identifier and then an array identifier that is gonna be just the name of the array that we're gonna call it in our program. And then we need some size where the struct identifier again is going to be the struct that we want to make an array of. The array identifier is going to be the identifier of the array that we are making. And the size is the size, the amount of structs that we want. Now, let's take a look at an example of arrays of structs. Here we have a struct called package, and this package has four attributes, those being length, width, height, and weight. These all being doubles. If we were to instantiate this struct here, weak into a variable called package with a lowercase p, we would get a space in memory, which has space for four doubles, which are length, width, height, and weight. But if we wanted to have multiple of this struct, we could make an array of them by adding this opening bracket and a five saying that we want five instances of this package struct and then a closing bracket which will make an array called packages which has five instances of this struct which we can see down here each instance having its own length width height and weight which is independent from one another because they're at different locations in memory if you wanted to fill this packages array with data, you would first need to call an index of that array. We will just call zero for this example, and then an attribute at that index and set it to some value. So here we are setting the length to 10, and you see down here at index zero, we get a length of 10. If we move on to the width attribute, we can set that attribute to eight at this zeroth index of the packages array. And you see down here, we get an eight for the width. Similarly for the height, we add five. So we get five for the height and the weight we add a two or the weight we add 2.2, which we get 2.2 at the zero index for this packages array. If we did say at index three, the length is equal to five. You see over here at index three, we get a five. If we do the width to five, we get a five. If we do the height to five, we get a five. And if we do the weight to four, we get four. You could do the same thing for each of these indices, but if you go past the end of this array, then you are going into the territory of getting a segmentation fault because that is an invalid location in memory. So don't go past the end of this array. Now let's take a look at arrays of structs from a program. Here we have a struct called student, which has a first and a last name, which are both strings signifying the first and last name of this student. We have the course grade, which is a character. It's the letter grade this student has a double, which is the score or the percentage that this student has, and a double, which is the GPA this student has. If we come down here into main, we see that we have a array of size three in this case. We have to make this size a constant if we want to do it this way, because the compiler must know what size to make this array at compile time. And if it's not a constant, then this size could vary. So the compiler wouldn't know. So it must be constant. So here we have that array of three instances of the student struct that we are going to call students. 
And we're going to read from this file in.txt into the student struct because entering five attributes for three students would take a while. So if we come over here, we see we have three rows of data in this file. We have Adam Andrew, who has a D at a 64.7%, which would be a 1.0 for the GPA. We have Alex Saint, who has an A. They have a 96.2 for their percent, which is a 4.0 for the GPA. And we have Clinton Smith, which has a B, and that is an 87.6% that Clinton has, and that would be a 3.0 for the GPA. So we take this file here and we open it into an i file variable and also we have to have this f stream included to do that and then we come down here and in this loop we are going to go from zero to size so we're going to loop three times and we're going to read in a first name a last name a course grade a score and a gpa and if we go over to this file we can see that there is a first name a last name a course grade a score and a gpa on each line of data so every line of data is valid so we don't need to do any air checking here but if you did need to do air checking you could do some air checking in this loop right here so we'll read from that file three students into our students array. So all three elements of our students array will be filled with this data. And then we can come down here and output the array of students. And I'm just using some IO manip right here so that they line up nicely as columns when the out. So it doesn't look like this when it gets output so that the names and the grades and scores and GPAs are all lined up nicely. And remember to use IO manip things, we must come up here and include IO manip. So if I come down here and open up a terminal and compile this program with G++ and the name of the program, I will get a dot out, which I can run with dot slash a dot out. And you see, we will get all of the data from this file output to the screen because we first read in from that file right here, all of this data into this array of structs of students. And then we come down here and simply just output all of that data to the screen. And that is all that I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.